Friday, 8.30 p.m., Oregon State at Oregon. Oregon is a 13-and-a-half point favorite, Mason. Over under 62 and a half. It's the Civil War. Can we say that? I guess we can say that. We can say whatever we want. It's freaking it, YouTube. It's weird. This game's in Oregon and nowhere near where the Civil War took place. <laughs> <laughs> We're calling it the Civil War. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No kidding. Uh, yeah. What's up with that? Um, Oregon is obviously a big favorite, 13 and a half point favorite. Oregon State is coming off, I would think, a pretty def deflating loss at home against Washington. Um, I feel like Oregon State fans, I, maybe they feel the same way I do. I don't know. Why in the world is Oregon State not running the football every down in that game? Mm -hmm. I, I don't understand. You got DJU. You got Martinez. Why are you not running the football every, every play in that game? I mean, I just thought they took way too many deep shots and forced them. Uh, for some of them in a double and triple coverage. Just not a great game plan, I didn't feel like, uh, for this Washington, for that Washington game that they had last week. Um, Washington State, or excuse me, Oregon State does not, I don't feel like, have the motivation that Oregon is going to have in this game. Oregon, as we mentioned a few minutes ago in our live video here, but if you're just joining us for the breakdown, thank you so much. Uh, please like and subscribe. We'd love to have you um, at First Along College Football. Um, Oregon has not solidified their spot in the Pac-12 championship yet, okay? There, there are things that needs to be done. There is business that needs to be taken care of here. So they get the Beavers at home, and Oregon's numbers this year, Mason, are just off the charts. We're going to go through some of these uh, team rankings uh, for Oregon here. And it's it's pretty amazing what Dan Lanning has done with this Ducks group. Um, done a really, really good job. And some some could argue they could be undefeated, right? Obviously, they could. It was a three-point loss they had. I mean, a couple of bounce of balls, and, and you know, they, they could have beat Washington and, and maybe are going to have their chance to, to avenge that loss. But offensively, second best uh, in yards per game at 543. That's, like I said, second in the country now. Okay, not in the Pac-12. They're number one in the Pac-12, second in the country. Rushing yards per game, 196.6. That's 21st in the FBS. Uh, passing yards per game, 347.2. That's third. Points per game, 46.5. And that's second in the country. Very, very potent offense. Uh, Bo Nix is obviously a Heisman candidate. I am pretty daggum sure your boy will be in New York. Uh, at least for the ceremony. I don't know that he'll win it, but he, he's got just as good a shot as anybody, I think, at this point. I think point. he's got the best shot, honestly. Yeah, he might. And, and we'll, we'll see what happens, you know, this weekend because he could definitely ruin it. Yeah. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll see. Defensively, uh, not as good as the offensive numbers, but by God, they're good. Um, Rushing yards per game, 96.2. That's 11th in the country. That's going to come in Andy this weekend, Mason, against against Martinez in this offensive line because we know what Oregon State's plan is, right? It's it's line up, run the football, hit you with play action, deep shots. I mean, we just saw it last week. They're, they're running that thing. Uh, come hell or high water, monsoon, hail, tornado, uh, that's their offensive game plan, as we saw last week. So, so that rush defense is going to come in handy. Um, Average giving up 191.7 passing yards per game. That's 36 in the FBS. So if you kind of want to look at this team, this defense, if there is uh, a propensity to give up yards, it's usually through the air uh, or, or more so through the air, I guess I, I, sh I should say. But me and my, me and my dad, uh, shout out, shouts out to my dad uh, if you're watching this. Uh, we were talking about this this whole situation with Oregon uh, last night, and and you know, I said pull up Oregon's schedule. I, I wanna I wanna hear who they've played because when the year started, I remember looking at Oregon's schedule and I said, man, that's a that's kind of tough. That's kind of tough. Mm -hmm. Well, let's see how tough it sounds now. Portland State at Texas Tech. You know, obviously, that sounded like a lot tougher game in the beginning of the year, right? Hawaii, 
that even sounded like a tougher game at the beginning of the year. They're dog, hot dog water. Colorado didn't know it at the time. Thought they were pretty decent going into that game, didn't we? Hot mm-hmm. dog water. Stanford, hot dog water. At Washington, lost that game. Washington State, they beat 38-24, to so beat them by 14 in that one. At Utah, 35-6, to that's a good win. Cal, 63-19, to that's what you got to do to Cal. USC, 36-27, to that was a disappointing win if there was one. That one was disappointing. And then at Arizona State, they absolutely buried them alive in the first half last week and looked very good doing it. Bo Nix had six touchdowns in the first half. That is not a strong schedule, man. Mm -mm. And the the hardest game they played, obviously, was Washington, and they lost that one. So I I am still – the jury is still out for me a little bit on this Oregon team. I I, Earlier this week, I was bullish on them, and now the more I look at this team, I, I just need to see more. It's not that they haven't done what they're supposed to do. These numbers are incredible. They've beat all these teams that they were supposed to beat. They lost to a really good team. That's okay. That happens. But I still feel like there's something to prove here with this with this Oregon team. And I don't know that Oregon State has got the guys that's going to be able to test this Oregon team. I, I don't think so. Uh, obviously, Vegas doesn't think so either with this line. But – uh, I, I think it's really going to come down to if Oregon State can hit a big shot in this game. They weren't able to do it against Washington. They never hit a big shot. We know they're going to have some success running the football. That's going to happen. They'll have 100 yards or so at least. But are they going to be able to hit the, the deep shot? Uh, that, that's, that's something that, you know, they left to be desired last week and I think kind of kind of the, uh, you know, the I guess keys to victory for Oregon State in this game. Um with all that being said, Oregon State, offensively, like I said, they like to run the football. Top 25 at 192 yards per game. Um, yards per game, they're top 25. Not great passing, 240 uh, yards per game. Um, I think it's really going to come down to Oregon playing a clean game and uh, Oregon being able to throw on this team. I, there's not a soul on the field for Oregon State that can cover Troy Franklin. I know mm-hmm. that. Um, Troy Franklin – is uh, got to be the leading rush or uh, receiver. Twelve hundred and twenty-one yards this year. Yeah. Ooh wee! And Tez Johnson at eight hundred and five for Oregon. So in that aspect, I think Oregon's going to be able to do what they want through the air, as long as Nick's ain't trying to you know force something or or you know they're trying to go for fourth downs or or two point conversions every time. Uh, I think they're going to be able to cover this spread. What do you think? Yeah, you know, last year um, Oregon was favored in this game too. You know, they were they were um, ranked I think eighth in the country going into this game. And I don't know if you remember, I went back and watched the highlights from that game because I couldn't quite remember how it went. Um, and, and I know why now because you know Oregon was up by seventeen points in that game, and uh, Oregon State came back and, and beat them. You know, the final score was uh, 38 to 34. And if I'm not mistaken, that kept Oregon out of the Pac-12 championship, um, which inevitably led to Utah winning it. So, um, again, Oregon is is almost a, a two-touchdown favorite in this game uh, this year. Now they get the game at home, so I think that that has a, a – you know, uh, I think that that makes this a little bit of an easier win for them. Uh, but it doesn't get much easier than this. They have an 81% chance of, of winning this game, uh, according to ESPN. Uh, the, the Ducks, I think they just pretty much have to play like they've been playing and and, and um, don't turn the ball over, you know, play kind of safe. And, and I think that they're going to be just fine. Um, but I'm not ready to say that they can't be beaten. I, I think there's a big difference, you know, um, in should and and can't, right? Um, so so how can Oregon State pull off the upset again this year? First, they have to win the turnover battle. Last week, the Beavers had three turnovers against Washington and lost a game in which they outrushed and outgained the Huskies. Turnovers uh, were a huge reason for that loss. I know weather played a, a role in the turnovers, but you know Washington. They had to play in the same elements and and only had one turnover and weather should not be a factor in this game. According to, to the uh, forecast at at this moment, Um, 
you know, Oregon does a great job of protecting the football. Bo Nix has thrown just two interceptions all season, which is phenomenal. Um, so finding turnovers won't be easy, but true freshman uh, cornerback Jermod McCoy could be the catalyst for the Beavers defense. Um, he should get a lot of attention this way or his way. Um, I, and I'm wondering if he can't get an interception or at least be effective, right? He, he's going to have to um, go up against, you know, Ferguson and whoever's, whoever's playing opposite uh, Troy Franklin, you know, more than likely. And um, how effective can he be? You know, that's a tough spot for a true freshman, but he's, he's proven to be kind of up to the task to this point of the season um, against some, some other really good wide receivers as well. Secondly, Oregon State needs to win the line of scrimmage and affect the quarterback on defense. The Beavers are, are seventh in the country in sacks, and Oregon is first in sacks allowed. So it's good on good. Let, let's watch that battle in the trenches and see kind of how that um, you know tells us. You know th that'll tell us kind of how the game is being played out. Oregon statistically has the edge, but they have not faced a pass rush quite like this one. Um, Andrew Chatfield Jr. has nine sacks on the year for Oregon State. So can the Ducks contain him and, and the rest of those talented linebackers? They've got um, throughout the, the defense and just the front seven, I think they've got like 36 sacks this year already. So uh, which is just awesome. Uh, lastly, if, if they can win the line of scrimmage, that should lead to more yards on the ground. So Damian Martinez uh, cannot rush for under 100 yards and the Beavers still win this game. He's got to get going in the run game um, and, and in, in the passing game. He's a weapon in both, really. Um, that would really work nicely to set up the play action, and maybe you get Velling more involved. He had one catch last week and hasn't scored a touchdown in three games, and he's a huge weapon for Oregon State. Um, I, I think that they're at, uh, or I think that Oregon State is at its best when he's getting about six to eight targets in a game. So let, let's see if they kind of rely on their tight ends a little bit more uh, in this game. Um, overall, I, I don't think you're going to find a bigger matchup on Friday, um, but big doesn't always mean competitive. As, as much as I love Jonathan Smith and this Oregon State team, I don't think that they have the dudes to keep up uh, this week. I, I think I, I'm taking your words verbatim almost, Mark, but um, you know, Oregon is looking, they're looking like a playoff team right now. And as long as they stay stay focused on this game and they don't get ahead of themselves and look, you know, looking for redemption against the Huskies, um, I think they can take care of business. I, and I like them to cover at home. You know, you, you mentioned, Mark, that um, they still have a lot to prove to you, you know, and, and to a lot of other, um, well, to the committee, maybe, you know, I, when you look at their strength of schedule, um, they got to keep putting away teams that they're better than. And um, I think they'll continue to do that again this week. So give me Oregon to win 39 to 26. Uh, I also like the over uh, 62 in this game. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I like that. Look, it, it's going to come down, I think, too, for, for Oregon State. We had kind of broke this part of the game down last week whenever they were facing off with Washington. If Oregon State can't get to the quarterback, it's problems. Yeah. It's it's problems down the field. If they they're not going to cover to sack you, that's not going to happen. They're not going to cover long enough to to let your linebackers have time to get there or defensive line. You're not going to be able to bring three with this Oregon State defense. It's not happening. So they have to be able to blitz Bo Nix and get him on the ground. That is, I mean, it has to happen. Oregon is. Um, 52% for the year on third down and 68% on the uh on fourth down this year. And and they've went for four on fourth down 19 times. Okay. <laughs> so um and on the other hand of that, you know, I talked about them getting Bo Nix on the ground. Um they 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 don't know Oregon doesn't allow sacks, man. They've mm -hmm. only been sacked five times this year. Yeah. Total. That's incredible. That's got to be number one in the country. Yeah, that's yeah, um, that is. Uh, that was one of the stats I had. Because I haven't heard a total that low of any team that we've talked about at this point in the season, not anywhere close. I think Washington uh, has given up about seven or so. Um, I may be wrong on that. But um, this Oregon State team has been good at getting to the quarterback. They have 35 sacks on the year and, and have created a negative 231 yards on those sacks. So – that's kind of a battle within the battle there as well. Um, can can Oregon State get home against Bo Nix? 
uh, and, and at the same time keep him in the pocket because we all know he can move around with those legs. So um, it definitely interesting game. Um, can't wait to see it. Tons of motivation for Oregon. Uh, we we kind of made a mistake on one of our past videos saying that Oregon had clinched their spot in Las Vegas. They have not. They have not clinched it yet. They need to win, okay, and they're in. Um, if Oregon State was to beat Oregon and then Arizona beat Arizona State, Arizona goes in place of Oregon. So I think that almost works to Oregon's advantage here. Um, that Washington this week doesn't that – they're already thinking about Oregon in, in at least some capacity, okay? But Oregon cannot afford to overlook Oregon State. Otherwise, they don't even get to their Pac-12 championship, much, much less the playoff. And I trust Dan Lanning will have his team mentally prepared for that.